Hello everyone, including my subscribers and my future subscribers as well. So finally, the long-awaited second part of episode 39 of Skibidi Toilet Multiverse by Dom Studio was released today. And in this video, I will fully analyze it for you. And I will also find all the references and Easter eggs that were present in this episode and answer any questions that may have arisen for you as you watch this episode. What is the function of the antenna that was installed by Titan TV Man? How was C-Pen actually able to teleport to Professor Kleiner's lair, and why didn't he finish him off? What will become of Skibidi Nemesis and Titan Drillman? And also, will this fashionable Skibidi toilet be able to take revenge on the green cameraman for a long-standing grudge? If you want to know the answers to all these questions, then get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end, because it will be extremely exciting. Let's go! Okay, so the episode immediately begins with a fight between Dragon version of Titan Drill Man and Skibidi Nemesis. And just look at how this Giga Chad, with just one movement of his hand, set his jaw right as it dropped a little bit after such a blow. And by the way, if you will look closely enough, then you can see the inscription caution on the arm of this Skibidi mutant. And well, then we see how Nemesis, according to the plan that was drawn up earlier, began to distract the forces of the Alliance, namely the Titan Drill Man so that he would not break into the Skibidi base ahead of time. And in case you suddenly forgot about it, then let me remind you that this is necessary for G-Man Apocalypse in order to complete its preparations and wake up. But I will also return to this a little bit later, so watch this video to the end, not to miss the most important part. So Titan TV Man tried to restrain this guy, but Nemesis angered him so much with shots from his energy cannon that he is now ready to sacrifice the plan in order to take revenge on this annoying Skibidi, who continues to shoot him right in the face while Drill Man is being held by Titan TV Man. And finally, the Red Titan breaks free from the grip of TV Man while pushing him hard with his tail, which causes the poor guy to be imprinted into the wall. And this situation also gets a rather funny reaction out of TV Man who curses Drill Man. And right after that, Nemesis and Drillman fly to a secluded place to fight there. And this place is actually a reference to another location. But I'll tell you about it at the moment when these two will arrive in there. And now it's time to talk about Titan Pencil Woman. Or rather about her new, awesome ability which we were shown in this episode. When she was surrounded by Skibidi toilets who teleported to the wall, she turned her hand into a huge eraser and she did it rather suspiciously, and now I'll explain exactly what I mean by this. So let's remember how in the analysis of the 38th episode, I mentioned that this Titan teleports in a similar way as Counter Titan, which belongs to the Master. And now we see that she is also able to replicate various devices from her body parts, or rather from her hands, and it looks exactly the same as Counter Titan does. Especially considering that C-Pen and perhaps some pencil men were controlled by the Master, I assume that Pencil Woman may also have something to do with it. Well, at least that's how it looks to me at the moment. And perhaps she was created with the help of the Master as well, or maybe the Master sent drawings for her creation to see pen or something like that. But let's get back to the battle now. So Pencil Woman runs her eraser right over the neck of this Skibidi toilet, which causes his head to get separated from his toilet tank, and it looks a little bit weird to me. I mean, isn't it really strange? Although considering her race, such an ability is quite expected too. But the fact that it works for all creatures and not just for the Pencilman led me into some sort of confusion. But let's continue though. So at the moment when Titan was finally distracted, Susie shot at her from her Titan Destroyer. And this time she actually managed to hit only her arm and not the actual body of the Titan, which caused Pencil Woman to fall off the wall. And in slow motion, we can also see how irreversible consequences began to occur with her hand. And something similar to this already happened with Titan TV Man once. But the Green Titan guessed with the help of her eraser to remove the infected hand, which is why she was able to survive or at least avoid some really serious consequences. And I think that if Susie had actually managed to hit her into the body, then Pencil Woman could have been destroyed by this formidable weapon, but Susie did not succeed in doing that, so we have what we have at the moment. Okay. Well, so after landing, the Titan immediately restored her lost arm. And there is nothing surprising in this, of course, because we have already seen how the Pencilmen draw themselves their lost body parts. So in the end, Susie makes the assumption that the Green Titan is not particularly strong in melee combat, and that apparently her main advantage is the ability of creating pencil-drawn shelling and drawing helicopter gunships which we actually could already observe in the 38th episode. 
and it turns out that she is now trapped and unable to fend off the incoming crowds of toilets. So I believe that Skibidi has several pencil men in captivity somewhere, who without any rest are drawing them Skibidi toilets, which are then getting teleported to the battlefield in endless waves one after another. But fortunately, the cool Titan speaker man arrives to help her, and it's a pity that his music wasn't playing at that time, as it occurred during his first appearance. But despite the fact that there are two Titans now, based on their condition, it seems to me that they will not be able to hold the defense for an indefinite period of time, as there will be hope only if someone else can come to their aid. And I think that Susie also realized this fact. At this time, Titan TV Man finally climbed onto the wall, which is located right next to the main building of the Skibidi base. And in this frame, we can see that it is located deep underground, and there is also a black fog in the space between the tower and the wall, which probably prevents the Alliance agent straight from teleporting inside. And at least this assumption may explain why this fog is here and why the Titans just didn't teleport inside and smash everything in there. So Titan TV Man pulls this strange thing that he received from scientists in a secret episode out of his coat, and what we will see next will confirm my guesses about what it might be. So immediately after the Titan put the antenna on the floor, he was attacked from behind by the Skibidi toilet, as both Titan and Skibidi were extremely close to this thing. And this is how the plot of the Skibidi multiverse would actually look like if this toilet had guessed to swipe with its claw this in this direction. But after the Titan pushed the toilet away, the Skibidi decided not to attack again. And I don't really know how to explain this. Apparently he was offended and decided to just stand next to him. And these shots show how he continues to move his claw behind the Titan's back. Either he realized that attacking from behind was beneath his dignity, so he would no longer do so, but in any case, immediately after the Titan left to fight with another batch of fresh toilets, he flew after him, and at that moment, Susie flew up to the strange device. And here I want to say that I turned out to be actually right back then, when in the 33rd episode I have suggested that she could be some kind of hacker, and one of her roles would be to hack all sorts of different technical things, and finally we saw it in the actual multiverse. So she connects to the antenna with her spikes, but immediately after she connected to the system, a squad of the Alliance's agents who are led by the large TV man teleported here, which also has a container with other agents inside at hand. And this is probably a reference to one of the episodes of the original series. And in this box, we see several ordinary agents. And this guy was obviously not very lucky in his location. There's also the green cameraman, who, by the way, has a clock grenade, a nerd clockman, an orange drill man, as well as a pencilman bouncer who is clearly a little cramped and he may even have crushed several cameramen because of his size. In their turn, several Skibidi toilets also teleported here to help their hottie mistress, and you just look at them. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> I don't really know why this bro decided to wear these glasses, but now I want the same ones. And let me reassure you that in the next episodes, I will definitely get them. And it looks like the bro decided to take revenge on the green cameraman who gave him the middle finger in the 10th episode. Yes, the POV was exactly the green cameraman then, but it turned green only when Clockwoman touched him in the 22nd episode. And now he and this Skibidi in cool glasses will meet again on the battlefield. But I have a feeling that the Skibidi toilet will lose the second round only if he has not prepared something unexpected to show. And besides him, we also see here a Skibidi with a huge um, cannon right in the middle. And he also has a rocket launcher. This guy looks like a dangerous ranged fighter. There are also several smoked mutant skibbity, the production of which was shown to us in the 33rd episode, and two helicopters in black masks, which also appeared in earlier episodes of the series. Well, and now let's finish the analysis of all these skibbity on this strange toilet, which is placed right in front of everyone to behold. So in fact, this is an ordinary Skibidi toilet, but it has some kind of metal ball attached to the tank on tracks, and on the sides and back of this ball there are guns that it can apparently shoot. And also, if you look closely, there is a small door where the toilet is attached to the ball, which apparently allows this Skibidi to be inside this armored device like a snail, so maybe in the next episode we will see how this happens. But the agents were not particularly impressed by this whole Skibidi company, and the large TV man confidently says that they should have taken more people, after which he turns on his television glow. But I think that at least this guy is safe because of his cool glasses. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that the large TV man, in addition to the TV set itself, also has four speakers that affect the Skibidi toilets with sound. 
and considering that none of them have headphones, I can't even imagine how they will resist this. But in any case, we will not see it in this particular episode, because immediately after that we are getting transported to the fight between the Skibidi Nemesis and Titan Drillman, and the Skibidi Mutant has already led his enemy quite far from the base, right into the mouth of the volcano. And immediately after that, the Titan demonstrates his improved laser beam after transformation, which he fires from his head drill. And it turns out to be so powerful that it does not just drop Nemesis to the ground, but rather impresses him quite strongly, which is why the lava level in the volcano begins to rise. And in general, I believe that this fight here is a reference to the fifth part of the Resident Evil game series, where in the finale there was also a fight in a volcano between the supervillain and the main characters. And it's just a pity that here we won't see the legendary scene of the cobblestone being beaten the heck of. But later we will see another legendary scene from another game. So watch this video to the end. And also make sure that you give this video a like if you enjoy what I'm doing, as well as subscribe to my channel. But let's continue. When Nemesis gets up after a fall, you can see how parts of his jetpack caught fire. And later this will turn into some big problems for him. He releases his tentacle at Drillman, but after the transformation, the Titan became more agile and was easily able to catch him and throw Nemesis while using his tentacle. And immediately after he landed on his ass, Professor Kleiner called him on the phone. He was currently at the Skibidi base in a room with G-Man Apocalypse, which should be ready soon and according to the Professor, finally end this war. But I digress, as the Professor begins to tell Nemesis for the thousandth time that it is necessary to keep the Titan away from the base. Moreover, when Kleiner called him on the phone, the picture that was broadcast to his monitor disappeared and the inscription only sound appeared. Probably something is broken, so we need to call a programmer. The professor also says that he thought this Skibidi was smarter than he thought. But bro, look at him. Does this dude really look like Albert Einstein to you? But joking aside, the transformation into a dragon was clearly unexpected for Skibidi toilets. Who could have imagined that Drillman would turn into such a strong titan after receiving critical damage? This is what the professor reports. And in the end, when the dragon Drillman finally got tired of fighting Nemesis, he concentrates the energy of his core and fires six lasers directly from his body, even piercing the mutant's energy shield and knocking this giant to the ground once again. And at this point, I thought about the limits of the titan Drillman, because he can't be in this state forever and he also can't use his superpowers indefinitely, isn't that right? So I have a feeling that eventually this guy will exhaust the limits of his body and stop fighting so effectively, if he can move at all, especially considering what happens next in the course of their fight. But I will tell you more on that later. Okay, so Nemesis asked to send other Skibidi warriors to help him, numbered 05 and 04, and it is Skibidi under these numbers that we have not yet seen. At the moment, only eight Power Rangers from Skibidi Toilets are known, although wait a minute, it's actually seven of them already. But in any case, these two will not come to the aid of their bro because they are a backup weapon in case Titan Clockman finally finishes solving the missile issue and comes to the aid of the Alliance. And if you watched my interview with Dom Studio, then you know that they spoilt a little bit to me on what would happen next, namely that Titan Clockman would eventually be released and would be even more aggressive due to the fact that he had to spend a lot of time to deal with it. If you have not seen this interview, then I recommend that you watch it as well after watching this analysis. And based on what I just said, I think that in the next episode or maybe in the near future we will see new Skibidi fighters numbered 04 and 05. But I'm still betting that it will happen in the 40th episode at the very least. The scientist informs that he will not take any risks and send 04 and 05 to help Nemesis for which he takes offense at Kleiner and says that he is constantly sitting safely in a place where there are no enemies. And ironically, it is at this moment that C-Pen teleports into Kleiner's office along with flying purple balls, one of which we have already seen in the secret scene. They are also similar to the device that the Alpha had, but that's not about it now. I think that most likely at this moment you have the following question. How the hell were they able to teleport here? And if it's so easy, then why didn't they do it earlier? I believe that the whole point is in this device that Titan TV men installed next to the Skibidi base, as it weakened the anti-teleportation protection of the toilets, which is why now undesirable personalities can get inside their base, one of which is this scoundrel. But I have another assumption. Perhaps the protection of the Skibidi is intended against the kind of teleportation they are familiar with, 
namely with the help of black fog that TV men and skibidi toilets can generate. And that's why C-Pen was able to get here. But this is quite strange, considering that they have known the Alpha and her way of moving around, so they had to prepare for the fact that the Master would eventually take revenge on them. So I think the first option is more likely. So the evil robot is preparing to finish off the Skibidi Professor with the help of his minigun. But this bespectacled dude turned out to be much more swift, and was able to prevent himself from turning into a sieve by shooting at the sea pen with the laser of his tentacle. However, this did not save him from injury, and the evil robot shot him with his laser, which he turns out to be able to let out of his only robotic eyes. But it did not in fact destroy Skibidi Kleiner, and perhaps you have a question. Why? And I have a hunch about that. So as I have said earlier, in the near future, we will probably see the first serious actions of the Master in order to take over the Earth. But at this particular moment, he is waiting for the right moment when the war between the Skibidi Toilets and the Alliance will weaken both of them well enough. And when both sides are exhausted enough and spend most of their forces, he then will begin his conquests, and then there will be no one left who could stop him from carrying out his insidious plan. And that's why he ordered C-Pen not to destroy Professor Kleiner. To confirm my words, C-Pen tells the toilet that they don't want the G-Man apocalypse to be stopped, calling it pathetic. I think that at this moment he knew what he was talking about, because a couple of seconds ago he downloaded some information from the computer with his finger, and now he most likely knows some plans for toilets and their technologies. And realizing what the power of G-Man Apocalypse is, he has also realized that most likely he either he won't be as strong as we think, or maybe he meant that the Master will be able to easily resist him in the event of a collision. Also including the fact that they now have some information about him. So in this frame, we can see that Professor Kleiner's tentacles are multifunctional, and in addition to the ability to move the toilet and the combat laser, they also have a therapeutic laser in their arsenal, which will allow the Professor not to bleed out due to the fact that the C-Pen tore off his arm. Maybe in the next episodes, he will even be able to restore the missing limb. So after having finished his business, C-Pen returns to the Pencilman base, and we see a scene that was already in the announcement of this episode, but this time we see more details. In my analysis, I wondered about the head of the pencil men, or rather how he would react to the actions of C-Pen, and now this robot was saying that he should go to another place and convince his dad. I think what he means is that he wants the pencil men to finally side with the master and start openly acting not only against the Skibidi toilets, but also against the alliance leading to betraying them. And something tells me that Papa Pencilman won't think about it for long, and will most likely listen to his special agent. After telling C-Pen to hurry up, the flying balls teleport to counter Titan which is still under the control of the Purple Beetle. And I want to draw your attention to the fact that apparently this robot is currently not so far from the Skibidi base. This can be indicated by the buildings that appear in the frame, as well as the abundance of one-eyed Skibidi toilets that attack the Titan. This is probably the same place that we saw in episode 32. So in the end, it was not Skibidi who stopped him, but the Master himself with the help of his toys. They dug out a naughty cockroach from the body of the Alliance, having previously electrocuted it, from which the beetle's fart burned a little. Once back on the ground, he put out his fire and ran away in an unknown direction, and the Master did not even chase him, which seemed strange enough to me, because at least this cockroach is a huge source of energy and is able to at least reproduce the body of a counter-titan. We could see this in a special episode. And I also believe that this is not the last time we see this bug. And the fact that he was given the opportunity to quietly hide will play a role in future episodes of the series. But let's leave these arguments for later, and now let's talk about C-Pen, whose consciousness was just uploaded into the liberated counter-titan, saying that he must prove his loyalty by his actions. Here I want to say that at first I thought that the Master just captured the mind of C-Pen, since he is a robot. But now we see how these balls say that he also has to prove his loyalty to them. This suggests that his mind was not captured in the way I thought, namely by penetrating his artificial brains and rewriting their memories. It seems that such a trick will not work with him. The Master persuaded him to join his ranks with the help of words, and also helped him in destroying the Skibidi toilets while sending signals about where the last of the people were hiding, as well as where Bethany had escaped. Well, and as for the C-Pen itself, in the analysis of the teaser, 
I raise the question of what will happen to his first body now, and how will the Titan be controlled? His consciousness was completely transferred to Titan, and now there is an empty and inactive shell left of the sea pen. Isn't that right? Or can he now control the Titan's body without transferring consciousness into it? If the first option is correct, then perhaps by destroying the body of Counter Titan it will be possible to get rid of the sea pen. But only if someone hasn't backed up this artificial intelligence. So after another fit of hysterical laughter, the evil robot says that this technology surpasses everything and that he will not let the master down, after which he leaves the frame. And most likely he went to the master's ship, because the master had already ordered Counter Titan to return back to the ship, but the beetle that was in Titan at that time refused to do so, which is why he was fired. And perhaps in the coming episodes, we will finally see what the alien ship looks like, which is currently orbiting this planet. But I think that it's actually time to finish with this Titan and move on to the fight between Skibidi Nemesis and Titan Drillman, which isn't still ended yet. So during the fight, Skibidi Nemesis actually managed to knock Titan Drillman right into the lava lake, and this frame shows to us that this fight was not spent without consequences for the mutant. And in addition to the burning jetpack, he also lacks one arm at the moment. And when the mutant had almost flown away from this place, these very jetpacks finally stopped working because of the fire, so the mutant could not leave this place. Well, but Titan Drillman still managed to get out of the lava lake and all burned and melted down he ran straight at Nemesis. And I suspect that after this, this titanic body will definitely not function which we will see in the next episode. But with the last remaining strength, Drillman rushes at his enemy while knocking him to the ground and begins to beat him furiously with his hands, constantly accelerating. And this scene is a reference to the legendary scene from the game called Metal Gear Rising. And I would not be surprised if in the next episode, Nemesis gets to his feet with the words, Skibidi Toilets, son. That would be legendary. Well, now I want to talk to you a little bit about what awaits us in the next episode. So I think that first of all, we will find out exactly how the fight between Nemesis and Drillman ended. Even after that, I'm not sure that he's definitely finished. This guy should be strong enough to survive it. And of course, we will be shown a fight between the Skibidi Toilets led by Susie against the incoming reinforcements of the Alliance, including the second round between these two characters. Write in the comments about who you will be rooting for. And also on Earth, Titan Pencil Woman and Titan Speakerman are fighting endless waves of Skibidi toilets. And I think we will finally see how this grand battle will end near the last stronghold of Skibidi toilets. Well, and once again I would like to remind you of what is happening directly inside this base, where the rest of the Alliance agents have been fighting for Drill Woman for several episodes. In addition to this episode, we were informed about two numbered Skibidi who are also waiting for Titan Clockman to be released and they will try to detain him, and this will definitely happen, as Dom Studio themselves said so to me. Well, if you don't want to miss the analysis of future episodes, then be sure to subscribe to my channel, and it was me, ISO Chad. See ya!